QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. How to set up bank feeds. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our bank feeds practice file. We currently have the home page open. You can set up the home page by going to the company drop down and home page. We have the open windows open. You can set up the open windows by going to the view drop down and selecting the open windows. We're going to go through the process of setting up bank feeds to actually set up and link to the bank is a pretty straightforward process, although it can differ from bank to bank. So there might be different verifications in terms of how you're going to verify your account from bank to bank. But it's a pretty straightforward process and you can contact your bank and or QuickBooks if you are having problems with it. Both will have an understanding of these items if you're at a pretty large bank. So most large banks uh, and even smaller banks with more and more banks will have an understanding and possibly even a department related to uh, the linking of the QuickBooks and QuickBooks issues related to it. Now, as you do link to QuickBooks and think about how you're going to be uh, getting your information from the bank, there is an issue in terms of, you know, how much data do you want to be getting? Are you going to be duplicating the information in your system? So if you're setting up, in other words, your QuickBooks from scratch, and then you're linking and then you're linking to the bank, then you're going to get whatever bank information from some point forward. And you might have a question in terms of how far back can I go? Can I link to the bank and go all the way back to the beginning of the year so I can reconstruct my books possibly for taxes at the end of the year? You may be able to, but if you link to the bank, there's usually some restrictions on how far back you can go. Now, oftentimes you can get around some of those restrictions or get more of the bank feeds possibly by going to the bank itself, downloading the transactions from the bank in the format of say a QBO type file, which is a bank, you know, a file that's designed especially for taking the data and then uploading it to QuickBooks. So you may have to do that if you want a whole lot of data, like a full year's worth of data. Now also note that any data prior to that, you'll have a beginning balance that will not be included and you'll have to put that into the system somehow too. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that in the future so that you can then basically reconcile. So you'll have the activity from the time period that you will be downloading and then you'll also have you'll have to deal with the fact that you have a beginning balance so that it, you can first reconcile basically uh, your account. So we'll talk more about that as we go. Also note that if you already have transactions in the account and now you're setting up bank feeds, even though you already have transactions, you need to be careful that you're not duplicating the transactions. So you want to think about the, the timing in which you're going to be adding the bank feeds to your system so that you don't have duplicate transactions. Now note that when you do add the bank feeds, they will not automatically go into your bookkeeping system. They will not automatically be creating your financial statements, but rather go into like a holding place where you got to go in and then approve them and, and start thinking about how you can approve them and you can automate that process as you, as you go. But you don't have to worry about, uh, it shouldn't be the case where all the bank feeds are just going to be going right to your books and and distort your financial statements you they're going to go into kind of i call it like a limbo bank feed limbo field and then you got to approve them out of limbo and put them into the actual financial statement so if you have duplicate transactions uh, that you have recorded that have pulled in from the bank feeds then you can you can go into the limbo area and then and then delete them there before they are added to your actual books okay so we're going to go to the banking drop down up top and then we're going to go to bank feeds, banking to bank feeds. And we have the uh, set up bank feeds account. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go there. We're going to say set up bank feed account. It says all open windows will close. I'm going to say, okay, close all the open windows. That's fine. And then it's got a little connection item. Then you would search for your bank. Now all like large banks, all large banks or U.S. large banks at least will typically be here. So if you're at, if you're at like uh, Bank of American or Wells Fargo or Chase or something like that, those will be here. You can then type in here if you, if you would like to, and it'll help you to, to locate a bank. You can hit through, that'll be the, the search window. You can hit the search window and then some of the most popular banks will be on the right hand side. So you can check the right hand side here. I'm just going to pick uh, Chase as our bank. So here's the process. And obviously you can see the process up top. You got to find the bank, connect to the bank, link, and then that's it. Then that's done. And then you're going to go through and actually pick up the information from the bank. So I'm just going to kind of show you the, the linking process. It will, the, the actual verification to make sure you get the link could differ from bank to bank. So you might have to give them a verification code. 
and and uh, your password or something or uh, possibly a third site sometimes to have a verification of uh, of the banking information to make it a secure connection but again whatever the problem is if you if you contact the bank they're usually aware aware of it and our understanding of of the quickbook connections and uh, so you should be able to to get that done if you're at a large institution so we're just so we're just steps away from getting your bank transaction into quickbook but first take a minute to make sure you're enrolled in chase's direct connect service uh, ready to enroll think you might have enrolled already so here's the information for J chase's particular enrollment process enroll and ready to connect click continue log in and connect your accounts so if you don't want to use this service no problem you can always manually import your transactions into quickbooks here's how so you could go forward with this process here and do the connection uh, within your test file or and as we're going to do here we're going to do this manual process so i'm actually going to go to the bank i want to download the files and, and that's what we'll do in the future presentations that's how we'll work through this so you could if you're in your test file you could do the connection here or you might want to practice this manual this manual download which will get us to the same end point when we actually see the information in limbo within the bank feeds which is really kind of the confusing part of the bank feeds the bank feeds to connect to the bank uh, is not too difficult typically it's it's an easy process the the confusing part is basically once you download the bank feeds you know where do we put that so we we will be practicing with this manual method and we'll walk through the process of how to go to your bank account find your transaction detail and then download your your information in a qbo file which is basically a data file that's in quickbooks type of format and then we'll we'll upload them here again this process might be something you, you would need to do when you first do the bank feeds if you want a whole lot of data if you want more than like three months of data then this connection might not provide you with data that far back and therefore you'd have to go through uh, a process like we're doing here anyway so that's where i'm going to basically stop with the bank feeds here and then we're going to move to uh, this process again if you were actually to connect to the bank then you want to set up your your connection with whatever your bank requirements are and then continue on with the connection and then you would have a similar kind of component either connecting directly and downloading the banking information as you would go into the bank and then downloading the information and then uploading it you'll get to the same area of your bank statement feeds then being in limbo and then the process of of approving those bank feeds